For an engine to begin running on its own, it needs to be helped, and that's the job of the starter motor on the 1987-2006 Jeep 4 liter. Once the engine is helped, once it's given some momentum, the combustion process can take over. When the starter doesn't activate, you'll just hear an unnerving click. Nope and nothing otherwise seems to happen. The most common cause of this on the Cherokee would be the neutral safety switch. That's a lever connected to the transmission that detects which position the gear selector is in. It only allows the starter to engage when you're in park or neutral, of course, preventing the vehicle from suddenly jolting forward. The neutral safety switch, or NSS, gets gummed up over time. Grease and dirt work their way inside the lever portion and prevent electrical continuity. With no confirmed signal that the transmission is in park, the ECM won't allow the starter to engage. So, you get in your Jeep for the day. Fuel pump primes. No crank. If you have an automatic, move the selector back and forth between everything in park and try to start it when it's in neutral. So that tells me this Jeep has a bad neutral safety switch. Well, let's say, hypothetically, if it doesn't start even in neutral, there's one last trick you can try with a little piece of jumper wire. At the back passenger side of the engine bay, you'll find this gray connector, which can be a bitch to unplug, but once you get it unplugged, bridge pin seven and eight together with anything, like a paper clip, a piece of wire, and then with that connector bridged, So, if you suspect the NSS to be the culprit of a no crank, check out Dan H's video on how to remove and replace it. They can be kind of expensive, so if you don't break it taking it off, they can be disassembled and cleaned, as demonstrated in Nick and Time's video. When pin 7 has ground, that's what allows the starter to engage. Pin 8 is ground, so just connect the two prongs that are opposite the release tab to each other, and the engine should start. Just make sure to plug this connector back in before driving anywhere because the check engine light might come on. If you have a manual though, starting in 1991, they instead have a clutch safety switch, or CSS. It does the same thing as the NSS, but it mounts to the clutch pedal, only allowing the engine to start if the clutch is pressed in. You can bypass these things by just connecting the two prongs together quite easily. But if the Jeep still doesn't start, my next check would be the starter relay. On the OBD2 Jeeps at least, you can swap it with a different one. That resulted in no change for me, so the only thing left is the starter. This is of course assuming your battery isn't dead. I almost forgot to mention it, but start with the simple things first. Most XJs have a built-in voltmeter, and if the gauge is reading anything lower than about 10 volts, it's probably not going to be enough juice to start the engine. Nothing. Yeah, obviously with a dead battery, it's not going to start. With a second person in the Jeep, turning the key to the start position, get yourself a hammer and bang right. on the solenoid. <laughs> or if you have a manual, you can always push start it too. One of the advantages of having a manual is that we can take advantage of the rolling momentum from the wheels and send it backwards through the drivetrain to spin the engine and start it. So, yeah, we got no crank. Starter ain't working. So, with the key in the run position, we're gonna put it in first gear if you're gonna roll forward, reverse if you're gonna roll backwards. Holding the clutch down, I'm just rolling forward. Once we get going about five miles an hour, just drop the clutch and it'll start the engine. But now that we know my starter has failed, which is kind of disappointing because it's only about four years old, we can get to replacing it. The starter on the four liter has two variations. Up to 1998, the connection point for the solenoid ground uses a stud, where in 1999, it's a simple plastic connector. This is literally the only thing that makes the starters different, and literally the only reason the 99 plus starters can be over twice the price. So, to save myself nothing short of $100, I've got a 98 starter here I'll be putting in my 01 Cherokee. The only things you'll need to do this are a ring terminal and some wire crimpers.
There's nothing that draws more power from the battery than the starter, so before you do anything, make sure to disconnect both the negative and positive terminals. Unplug that solenoid ground and remove the half inch nut for the main feed wire. Then a 15 millimeter bolt on the top, the transmission side, and a 9 16 bolt on the bottom, on the engine side. Oh, there we go. Oh, Jesus. Who? Ah. Damn, whoever torqued these starter bolts sure wasn't messing around. Look at this shit. Yep, that's why my starter wasn't starting. The weld on this stupid little tab broke. So it's just kind of sitting in there loose. And whenever I smacked on it with a hammer, it would just like knock this into a position where it was making electrical contact and then like the engine would run it would vibrate around and the next time it wasn't making contact that is such a dumb way for a starter to fail the internet's consensus for a replacement starter is from autozone napa or o'reilly as unlike anything from rock auto these three all offer lifetime warranties so if the new one ever fails for any reason they'll replace it for free with no questions asked I like to put in the lower bolt first, and then be extra careful not to cross-thread the upper one. Said upper bolt is torqued to 35 foot-pounds, and the lower one goes to 30. And, uh, there you go, people. Video proof of me torquing the starter bolts. If you're using a 99 plus starter in a 99 plus Jeep, you'll just plug in this connector like a normal person. But to swap in a 98 prior starter, I'll just cut it off, strip the insulation, install a ring terminal, and put that on the stud. Alright, got my ring terminal heat shrinked and crimped on there. It's easier to do this from the underside than above. You can try to disconnect that weird looking clamp thing up there somehow. I don't know how that works. But remember, if you're sticking with the same year starter, you don't need to do this. Then the feed wire has a locking washer, snug that down, and with a visual confirmation that no wires are touching anything they shouldn't be, we can reconnect the battery. So even though we had to cut that ground wire, there is still plenty of slack in it. Now that you've got everything all connected, the only thing left to do is hook up the battery. And then try to start it. And now, the moment of truth. Well, I'm glad that's over.